Welcome to CAS 133 Columbia Gorge Community College, the Dells, Oregon, Mrs. Hewitt instructor. Well, we're there. We're in the finals week. So let's talk about what you have to do this week. The first thing you need to know is these projects are mandatory and if you do not complete your final project, it will drop your grade to no more than a C. So if you have an A going into finals week and you kind of blow off the project or you're busy, I mean life happens, you've got a lot of credits, you live a life, oh well it won't really matter. Understand that the highest thing you'll get is a C. <clears throat> it's worth 100 points so if you have a low C to start with, it's possible to drop to a D and fail the course because CAS classes do require you have at least a C for passing. So first thing to know that these are pretty important. This isn't the thing to blow off. And let's look our way through it. You got some assignments up here. You've got some announcements that will help remind you of things. One of those is, of course, that these are due Saturday night. However, on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, the link will close. And at that point, no more finals week work will be accepted. That is the cutoff. Now, if there's been some special situation and you and I have a special deal worked out to give you a little extra time, there are occasions that I will do it. I try not to because it does put me in a situation of really being pressed to get everything corrected. But once in a while. The other thing for everybody to know is that I start correcting Sunday and I correct all day Sunday sometimes. And sometimes I have to correct on Monday. It just depends on how many classes I'm teaching that term. So when I'm correcting, if I find something major, like it's going to really impact your score on your final project, or even worse, it may impact the final grade you walk away with, I will try to get an email to you. I will use the email address that's listed in Moodle, which means you're talking about your Columbia Gorge student email which means on Sunday you need to be checking your email pretty frequently every few hours. That will allow you to be able to correct a major boo-boo. Monday morning you may also need to correct or watch your email unless I've posted correcting is all done, which I will do like normal when I have finished the week's correcting. As soon as that's posted you can quit watching your email, but up till that point you need to watch it. I have to have grades in by noon on Monday, which means that everything will be done before that time. So at noon, you're off the hook. I have had students drop from an A to a B or a C to a D just because they didn't check their email, which is a reminder to be checking your student email because I do send out notices a lot of times in the week just before finals week or during finals week even saying you know you may really want to make sure you do an extra credit project looking at your grade usually as I finish up the grading the week before looking at your grade you probably could really stand it if you're right on the borderline between an A and a B I'll let you know that B and a C C and a D or you have a D and you really need to get those extra points to bring it up I'll try to let you know that and if you don't check your email until after the term you're out of luck. All right, get your goals. You've got some extra support materials as usual. And then this is broken down into some chunks. So let's kind of talk what each chunk has. This has your finals week directions, the video here. Then there's a video for the PowerPoint itself. It is kind of the direction, I may want to change that titling. It's kind of the directions for the whole final as well as doing a PowerPoint final project. Everybody's notice it's under for both PCs and Mac. Everybody's kind of encouraged and uh, needs to really watch that. Then you've got the PowerPoint here. Go through. It's got more details. And that will give you a pretty good idea of the project details. Then there's some more points about PowerPoint themes. There's the end of life technology for everybody. That's going to be part of our forum discussion this week. Then if you're on a PC alone and you would like to do a photo story instead of a PowerPoint, there is a uh, photo story video, and it's kind of a uh, summary one. It doesn't go into all the details. Some of those details are up here, and it assumes since you've watched this or supposed to watch this, you'll have those details already, and there is a, a short um, PowerPoint. I think it's like six slides, eight slides. It's, it's not very long. It might be ten slides, but it's a pretty short PowerPoint. 
Then there's some material for control panel because that's another one of your assignments this week. You're going to be doing a, um, a response paper for it. And so there's material for those of you that are PC users that would give for XP, whoops, Vista, and Windows 7. You've got a couple of YouTubes for Windows 8 to help you with that part. If you are a Mac person down here, you're going to have watched these PowerPoints and videos up here. And then you're going to come back down here and there is a video for iMovie and a PowerPoint for iMovie. And I think that iMovie PowerPoint is like four slides or five slides. It's really quite short. Um, and then there's some additional information. Now your iMovie use, iMovie does two things really well. It does video editing, i.e. I have a video camera and I'm out taking video and I come back and I want to edit it. iMovie is great for that. In fact, it's one of Mac's strengths is their video editing ability. However, that's not how we're going to be using it. Today and this week, we're going to be focused more on using it like a slideshow presentation like you would do if you were doing a photo story um, on a PC. And so, um, just want you to, to kind of focus on that. So here's talking about adding still photos to iMovie to make sure you know how to do that. Even if you're experienced with video editing, you may not have done still video or still photos. And then how to create a slideshow in iMovie. That is going to be extremely helpful for you to do. And then you have your control panel for a Mac, which is called Systems Pref Preferences. And it kind of just intros, it is a, a web link, and then you have a nice video that really takes you step by step through some of the things that you can do with that um, tool. So those are kind of your Mac things, and then you're going to submit your final PowerPoint photo story iMovie here. You want your best one there if you decide to do extra credit. You can do a second photo story iMovie or PowerPoint. And you can have two PowerPoints, two iMovies, two photo stories, a photo story and an iMovie, an iMovie and a PowerPoint, a PowerPoint and a photo story, any combination thereof is fine. Um, but if you show them to somebody and somebody goes, oh, wow, then that's the one you want to upload in this link because that's your 100-point link. And remember when it says no late work, that means that's going to lock at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning and... You're done at that point, other than watching your email. You've got your upload your control panel or systems preference response here. And when you write that, please mention whether you're doing a PC or a Mac. It makes it easier uh, for me to kind of track what you're discussing. And then your extra credit project here. It's due at the same time, same rules, nothing different. The only thing to remind you is if you've already done two of the book projects we've talked about throughout the term, you're not eligible for this. If you've done one book project and you want 20 more points, you can do this to get the last 20 possible points. That's fine. Um, but you can't go over that maximum of 40 other than you get the few bonus points with that envelope project we did. Those are just give me points. Those aren't part of that 40. You have your 321 journal reflection, and the questions are different this week, so please make sure you read them. They ask you, what did you find most helpful this in this class? How do you think you will use your new skill, and what did you enjoy most, but you still have to have your 150-word reply? And then your form, which is your technology end of life, which goes with the PowerPoint that was up here for everybody. So you're going to, after you're done with this, you're going to kind of work through yours. You're going to work through the section for everybody. And then you're going to work through your operating system section. If you're a PC or if you're a Mac, you're going to turn your work in. You've got your checklist. And you're going to watch your email on Sunday and early Monday until I post that I'm done with grading so that if you do have a problem, I can get a message to you so you can fix it, especially if you're sitting in the CD borderline area because I'd hate to see you fail the class with just a few points that you could have fixed if you were watching your email. I think this is going to pretty much wrap up our video in the last little couple you watched, so I hope you've had a great turn, and I'll be looking forward to seeing your final projects.